Which 360 camera should you buy in 2018? Hi, my name's Ben and I'm obsessed with 360 cameras. In case that wasn't already clear, I own quite a few of them, maybe 15, 16 or so. And I've had the good fortune to play with a lot of these and review almost all of these cameras in front of me and others. And I have a really good understanding of how the overall market for 360 cameras stands. This is an area that grows so damn fast. There are so many amazing cameras out and it can be super confusing about which camera is best for you. So in this video, I'm going to tell you what all the best 360 cameras are to buy in 2018, regardless of your budget. Three months ago when I made a which 360 camera should you buy video, I promised you guys I would update it every three months and that three months has come. So from the previous video, all the cameras I put in the do not buy category, I'm not going to include in this video because they're yesterday's news. I'm only going to include the cameras that made it through to the next round. So go back to... So if there's any 360 cameras you don't see here that you thought might be here, go check out that video and see why they didn't make the cut. The camera I want to start with is the camera that's had the most amount of hype in the last year and that is the GoPro Fusion. Many of you guys have seen my first impression video of the Fusion and it looks awesome, doesn't it? Well, I've got a confession for you guys. I don't actually own the Fusion. I borrowed it from my good friend Kevin Coons and we did a little review when I was in San Francisco, but I haven't touched it since. My first impressions of it were really good. However, a lot of people that actually own the camera and the camera is only available in the US and parts of Europe at the moment said that it is less than perfect. The actual camera seems to be performing well. However, the post-production seems to be a nightmare. It seems to be really hard to stitch the footage, to process it in the GoPro Fusion Studio app. And there's been a lot of issues with the whole post-production both on computer and on mobile, which is why I'm guessing they've delayed the worldwide release. I still can't buy a Fusion in Australia, even in January 2018. 18, it's not for sale. I reckon this is something that GoPro just didn't anticipate. I mean, as if they're going to miss out on all those Christmas sales when they could have released it at the beginning of December, yet they've delayed until January or beyond for a worldwide release. Look, I still don't know when it's actually coming out. I'm refreshing the GoPro website every single day and it's still unavailable in Australia and it's hard to buy from the US. So I will keep you guys posted as soon as I get one. It seems like it's going to be an amazing camera around the six or $700 mark. It'll be amazing for video, pretty good for photo, but we will have to wait and see. I can't put this in the must buy category because I simply just don't have enough experience with this camera yet. It seems like it's going to be an amazing camera, but there's going to be a lot of issues you're going to have to deal with with post-production. So definitely consider this camera and stay tuned for my review. I'll get my hands on it as soon as I can and let you guys know what I think. The next camera to consider in 2018 is the Gear 360 2016. Yes, this is a two year old camera now and most cameras from two years ago are simply outdated. The photos look bad, the videos look bad. However, the Gear 360 is one of the longest lasting 360 cameras in my personal opinion that is still a worthy consideration in 2018. Michael from 360 Rumors and I declared this the best 360 camera under $100 just a few months ago and I still think it is. If your budget is on the lower end and you just want to experiment with 360, this is an awesome 4K 360 video camera. It's only compatible with Android, so iPhone users, unfortunately, you won't be able to use this. However, this is still an awesome camera and delivers a very good result. Look, it's outdated in a lot of ways, like it doesn't have six axis stabilization. It does have a number of flaws, and I did make an in-depth review of this camera around a year ago, so you should check that out. However, if I only had 100 bucks to spend, I would definitely buy this camera because it's freaking awesome. That brings me to its little brother, the Gear 360 2017. This camera came out roughly a year year after the 2016 model and it did improve a lot of things like iOS compatibility, resolution was up a little bit. However, with this came a whole new round of flaws like the autocorrect stitching that adjusts as your video plays and the workflow. This is a nightmare to work with in Adobe Premiere. So while this technically is a good camera and there are many awesome features about it because of the abundance of cameras we have, it just doesn't compare to a lot of the other cameras on this table. If you got it for free with your Galaxy Note 8 or Samsung whatever phone, then you've got an awesome 360 camera on your hands. However, when I think about going and buying this on its own, I just probably couldn't do it to be perfectly honest. Right now in 2018, I would accept this for free, but in terms of buying it, meh, meh. I'm gonna put this in the meh category. Next on the list is everything epic in one. 
Yes, it's the Insta360 One, and this has been a good camera from the times I've used it. I do love attaching this to my iPhone and getting a really big preview of my 360 in advance. That's really cool. This is a great camera for bloggers. You can just point and shoot and do basically everything on your phone. The Insta360 One app is amazing. I would say it's probably the best 360 camera app out there of all these cameras, and it does allow you free capture, which means you can re-edit and reframe your 360s within the app. So once you've downloaded your video, you point your phone like this, move it around, and it recaptures your 360 video. That's awesome, and I love that about the Insta360 One. What I don't like is it's kind of hard to use this camera without it attached directly to your phone. It's a Bluetooth connection, and you can't actually see what you're shooting before you shoot it. So you might shoot 50 photos and discover later that they're all overexposed, out of focus, or there's some major issue with it. You do need to plug it into your phone again to work that out. So unfortunately, that makes it much harder to use without your phone. It's an awesome camera in many respects. It shoots raw, which most cameras don't. When I compared it to the Mi Sphere and the Theta V for both photo and video, it came third in both situations. So while this wouldn't be my first choice camera, I think it is a good all around camera for bloggers who want a fast work and people that like to keep everything on their phone. I would 100% recommend buying the Insta360 One in 2018. It's a great camera and you won't be disappointed, except for the things that are disappointing. Next camera I wanna talk about is Rylo. And who are Rylo? They came out of nowhere a month or two ago and now they have this awesome camera that has heaps of hype and there's some awesome footage on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram that looks amazing. It seems to be a camera that's geared more towards extreme sports than anything else. Its main draw card is its awesome stabilization. It makes Insta360 One 6-axis stabilization look really bumpy and shaky. I have absolutely no idea how they achieve such amazing stabilization, but it looks freaking cool. Next time I go skydiving, I will be bringing Rylo along just to see how smooth that stabilization is, which is probably gonna be never because I'm never ever gonna skydive. With that said, from what I've seen so far, this seems to be really the only feature worth talking about. Everything else seems quite average compared to all the other 360 cameras. Stabilization's awesome, but there's been issues with the app, issues with the workflow, issues with exposure. So if you're into extreme sports, this is definitely something worth considering. It seems like you can create an awesome moving hyperlapse effect with the Rylo. I saw Michael's hyperlapse with the Rylo and it looks super cool. There's no denying it, it looked freaking amazing. And that did genuinely get me really excited about this camera. I actually can't wait to try out some hyperlapses and some stabilization shots. Other than that, I'm pretty certain I'm not going to use it in any other scenarios other than movement. So this might be a good camera to consider if you like moving around a lot. It has been interesting because since the release of Rylo, Insta360 have taken a hint and they've massively improved their stabilization. It should be a firmware update and it should give the Insta360 One and potentially other Insta360 cameras that amazing stabilization with no bumps. When 6-axis stabilization first came out, look, it was absolutely amazing. I couldn't believe that a camera could actually do that from a simple firmware update. But now after seeing the Rylo, it looks pretty crappy in comparison. To be perfectly honest with you, you can see every shake. Go to 360 Rumors' channel and check out his comparisons because there's a massive difference between the two when it comes to shake. And as someone obsessed with 360 cameras, I'm so excited because I know this is going to be the new standard that 360 cameras hold, having this amazing smooth stabilization. So while Rylo may have started it, I can see every 360 camera that is made from now on taking a hint and working out whatever it is that stabilizes that footage and adding it to their cameras. So really with the Rylo, you need to ask yourself, do I want amazing stabilization now? Can I wait a few weeks or a few months for new amazing cameras to come out? The Rylo is about 500 bucks right now and that's more than the average 360 camera. I do have a feeling that the Insta360 One will match the Rylo with this firmware update, so I wouldn't rush out to buy the Rylo just yet. Look, I'll put it in the maybe column and I am going to release more content with the Rylo so you guys can make a more informed decision, but at the moment, I'd say wait. Next, we have the Xiaomi Mi Mi Sphere. And you guys know I love this camera. This is an amazing 360 camera, best bang for your buck in the two to $300 price range of all of these. It really just delivers so well in photo, video, just all around awesomeness. You've seen me compare it against so many other cameras and it holds its own against cameras twice the price. Do check out my review of the Mi Sphere, but I'm not gonna keep flattering it in this video because I've done it so many times. It's an awesome camera, do buy it if you've got two to $300 to spend because it's just going to deliver. I've almost never been let down by this camera. I took it to Niagara Falls. It got absolutely drenched by the water and it took some amazing 360 photos. It's water resistant. It's relatively tough. And if it breaks, you haven't lost that much money. You also have a team of dedicated engineers working on the firmware for this all the time. Michelle Mendes from the Xiaomi Facebook group is tirelessly working on firmware updates for this thing to give you even more bang for your buck. But essentially this has become three times as good as when it was first released purely through firmware updates. Things like resolution, stitch, 
stitching, the apps, just the general capabilities of the camera keep improving significantly. And even though this is a 200 and something dollar camera, I would pay way more for it. I would pay over $500 for this camera because it delivers in so many ways. So do consider it and do watch my other videos about it. Next, we have its new brother, and that is the Madventure 360, which is like an orange me sphere, right? They look exactly the same. And a lot of people have been asking, what's the difference? Well, there isn't a whole lot of difference, to be honest. They're basically the same camera. You can see it's the same design. So there's a company in China called Mad V who made the original Xiaomi camera and they sold the design to Xiaomi. I think the contract was around a year and the contract ran out recently. So Mad V have taken over and they're going to continue innovating this same design, making it better, making improvements. Whereas at the moment, Xiaomi, maybe they've lost interest in making 360 cameras, but Mad V is picking up where Xiaomi left off. At the moment, we don't know too much about this camera. It's basically the same camera, other than the fact that it comes with way more accessories. It comes with the awesome selfie stick and a whole bunch of tripod mounts and other cool stuff. So I would consider it. At the moment, it's in the lower $300 price range, but you know the engineers will be definitely be working on this camera and improving it for the next 12 months, whereas it's not guaranteed that's going to continue happening with the Xiaomi camera. So until more info is announced, and I probably will make a review of this camera, I'm going to put this in the maybe list. You should consider it definitely. It's probably going to be an upgrade to the Xiaomi camera. Next is another camera I don't own and I don't speak from experience from, so take it from what it's worth. And that's the Vuz 360 camera that came out last year. This is the cheapest 3D 360 camera and I've seen some footage from it and it looks pretty good. But personally, I think 3D or stereoscopic 360 video hasn't really taken off yet and it's not really worth spending a few extra hundred dollars to be able to get 3D because no one's going to watch it, maybe 2% of your audience. So it's not really something you should prioritize right now when such a small amount of people engage with it. You want the most amount of engagement possible and you're more likely to get that through utilizing the awesome features in some of the other awesome cameras. So I'm going to put this in the do not buy list for now. This brings me to another middle of the range camera and it's the Garmin Verb. This is an awesome 360 video camera and I would argue it's probably still the best 360 video camera pending the Fusion. You guys have seen my review and you've seen how tough and durable it is, how awesome the design of this camera is and how the look of the 360 video is superior to basically everything else. This is a higher price point so if you're willing to spend over $500 for awesome 360 video but less than a thousand then this is going to be one of your top contenders. No question it's greatest threat is going to be the GoPro Fusion and since the Fusion was released in America this has gone down $100 so you might want to consider it. Check out my review of the Garmin Verb because if you love 360 video then this is going to be a camera that doesn't let you down. This camera is really awesome. I can't think of too many flaws about it to be perfectly honest. I really wish I used it more but I don't shoot video that much. Personally, I'm more of a photographer, so a camera has to be good all around. It has to be excellent at photo and excellent at video. And this is more good at video, not so good at photo. So for me personally, as a photographer, I'm going to say no, but as a video shooter, absolutely 1000%, you should consider buying this camera. Verb. Moving on to the higher end 360 cameras, and this is a field I know absolutely nothing about. There are quite a few contenders like the Insta360 Pro, Zcam, Kandao Obsidian. There are various GoPro rigs where they combine anywhere from two to 30 GoPros into one ball, and then you stitch the footage together later. There's also the Yi Halo, which has just come out, which all of my professional friends are totally geeking out over. However, all of these cameras come above $2,000, anywhere from $2,000 to about $50,000, and that's just out of most people's price ranges. So while I'll probably never get my hands on any of those I would suggest checking out my friend Hugh from Creator Up because he has dealt with a lot of these cameras and he's the guy to go to if you're looking for a more professional rig. In terms of high-end photo other than using the GoPro method or the DSLR method where you take photos in all directions and stitch them together there is a camera called the Pinono. Mick from 360 Rooms absolutely loves it so check out his channel because he's got examples of it. It seems like an awesome camera. Basically nobody I know owns it other than Michael but that's all right. It seems like a cool camera. The workflow seems super confusing and complicated and I'm all about simplicity and sticking to your mobile, which is why I'm gonna focus more on these pocket-sized bad boys. I just removed a camera from here. Can you guess which one it is? Which camera was right here? It was my newest acquisition, a camera I'm very, very excited about, and that is this is the Yi 360 VR, my newest acquisition. And this is a 5.7K 360 video camera. To be perfectly honest, I've only had it for 24 hours, so I can't give you proper thoughts. I will put out a first impressions video in the next few days, and I will make a review of this as soon as humanly possible. But this is going to be an awesome option for video if you geek out on resolution. From having a look at the previews on my phone, it seems like it has issues with stitching. Also, the dynamic range isn't great. So if you're one of those people that's absolutely obsessed with resolution, then this will give you the resolution. 
Stitching might be a bit difficult, but it's under $500, so Yi is an option, stay tuned for more. Next, we have a camera from a much smaller company, and this is the VRDL360 camera. While I haven't actually turned this one on yet, it does do 7K photo and 3K video, which is pretty good. It's a $200 price point, so Personally, I think that's a little bit too much for only 3K video, especially when you have Gear 360 doing 4K for $80 or something. And when I think about it, that probably is the cheapest 360 camera that can do 7K photos. But there's just something about this camera that hasn't demanded my attention to turn it on and take photos and videos. It doesn't really have any unique features that these 360 cameras don't have. So it's not yelling at me, Ben, turn me on, take a 360 photo, make a tiny planet with me, Ben, please, I'm begging you, no. Whereas almost all these cameras, they're begging for a tiny planet to be taken. So look, I will take a photo with this. I know I'm being unfair. So to be continued with the VRDL360 camera, I'm going to put this in the mail list. Since the release of the Insta360 Nano and Insta360 Air, there's been a whole bunch of new 360 cameras that are mobile friendly that plug into the lightning port or the micro USB port of a smartphone. And there's going to be a ton of these coming out in 2018. A few I can think of off the top of my head are the Ion360, the Acer Holo360, the Motorola 360, and the Essential 360. These are mostly from already existing smartphone makers that thought they'd throw their name in the hat and put a 360 camera out that matches with their phone. Time will tell how those pan out, but at the moment, I'm still not a fan of 360 cameras that attach to your phone, only because it does limit your photo ability, having to have the camera physically in your hand all the time. I'm going to add one more camera to the do not buy list, and I'm very, very sad to do it. It is the Theta S. This used to be my favorite 360 camera and I've traveled the world with this thing. This has delivered some of my best content ever that's helped me grow my Instagram account to now 18 point something K followers it was mostly because of the content I shot with this camera. And now I'm telling you don't buy it, what's up with that? Well, this is purely because there's a new camera in town and that's called the Theta V. It's basically the same as the Theta S to be honest. However, they've upgraded the video to 4K. The 4K video looks excellent and why have 1080p video when you can have 4K? Do check out my review of the Theta V for a full list of its strengths and weaknesses weaknesses, but this is one of the most reliable cameras I've ever had as has been the Theta S, but the Theta V is a camera I know I can rely on. The optics are so good that it's always going to deliver you a really nice photo or video regardless of the situation. The dynamic range is among the best of all of these. The 360 photo workflow is excellent. The 360 video workflow is excellent. The tiny planet workflow of both of those are excellent as well. I can always rely on my Theta and it's one of the most pocketable cameras ever. Look, there's basically the size of a pocket and it fits so nicely in your pocket. And when you can fit a camera in your pocket, it means you can go out and take 10 times as many photos as you could with something like this in your pants. Yeah, not a good idea. Not if you want to stay out of prison. Three of the most popular cameras from the end of 2017 were the Theta V, Xiaomi Mi Sphere, and Insta360 One. And if you saw my comparisons between these three cameras, you'll see that the Theta V basically won in all three situations with the Mi Sphere a very, very close second. So the Theta V is just gonna have your back. If you have between $350 and $400 to spend, the Theta V is just going to be an awesome camera for you. However, if it's less, if it's more around the 200 to 250 price range, then the Xiaomi Mi Sphere is an excellent second best. It can do the vast majority of things that the Theta V can do, and in some cases, it can do way better. So the Xiaomi Mi Sphere is still my camera of choice for those on a budget. If you have around $300, get the Mad Venture. If it's $350, go the Theta V. If it's $400, you might want to consider the Yi. If it's $500 to $600, consider the Garmin Verb. And if your budget's 600 to 1,000, you will wanna wait around for the GoPro Fusion. From what I saw when I was in San Francisco, it was just amazing. The video looked absolutely stunning. There's going to be lots of amazing things about the Fusion. Like I said, it's going to have flaws, but in that price range, this will most likely be the camera of choice for video and potentially photo as well. I'll put links down in the description to where you can find all of these cameras for the cheapest price possible on either Amazon or gearbest.com. They're all amazing. And whatever your budget is, I would just say get a camera, even if it's the the worst one here, it's better than not having a 360 camera, even if it's this little thing. Yeah, this thing that's been sitting here at the front of the table. I literally don't even know what this is called. What does that say? Rexo? Look, this looks like a smartphone camera, but even this, some unknown 360 camera that I got in the mail from China is still better than having no 360 camera. So whatever your budget is, make sure you get yourself a 360 camera and you capture your world in 360. So I'm curious, which is your camera of choice in 2018? Which is your personal favorite? Which camera are you thinking about buying? Which one are you totally geeking out over? I'd be super interested to hear your guys' thoughts and definitely also leave a comment in the box below if you have any questions about any of these cameras. If I can help you out personally, I will do my best to do that. Don't forget I have full reviews 
reviews of most of these cameras on my YouTube channel, so go over there and check them out, see the side-by-side -side comparisons, and really work out which one is best for you, because there's no one single best camera. It really depends on so many things, most importantly, what you want to shoot. So do check out those other videos, because I think they're going to be really helpful. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there, because we've got more awesome reviews, side-by-side -side comparisons, and general 360 tutorials. You won't want to miss those in 2018. By the way, I'm on Instagram and Facebook as well, so definitely follow those pages, because there's going to be a ton of valuable content coming in 2018 with all of the latest 360 cameras like this one and 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 this one so definitely stay tuned for that until next time this has been your 360 camera obsessed friend ben and i will see you in the next video bam